All right, so I apologize. I know I'm in my work gear, but I was excited to make this video for you guys because a lot of you have been waiting to hear my thoughts on the Dell XPS 9 300 since my last video. And seeing that I had a couple days of work now, I thought, well, this is a better time than ever. So in my last video, I had several issues that made using what was otherwise a fantastic laptop, well, quite frustrating. Since then, I've tweaked some settings, I swapped out the SSD, I dropped a new fresh install of Windows. So the real question is, how's it all going? And I would have to say pretty well, pretty damn well. So just before I get into what issues were fixed and how I got there, I just want to seriously thank you all for the comments and support you have given me since the commencement of this YouTube channel. It's been super encouraging and a whole lot of fun. I will continue to bring the content that you guys want. So if there's any other videos you would like me to do, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to get it done. All right, so back to the Dell. The major worry I had with this laptop was the overheating and serious battery drain I got whilst putting the laptop into sleep mode. And a couple of things were suggested to me from you guys in the comments. I just wanted to cover them in this video so you could see what worked for me and what didn't. So the first suggestion was actually changing the power plant settings in the control panel. And that didn't seem to work in terms of fixing the power drain issues that I was getting as well as the overheating, nor did changing the settings for um, closing the lid of the laptop. The second thing that was suggested was ensuring that I had updated the BIOS and the official Dell drivers, which I did through the Dell driver update app. And that also didn't appear to be a very good solution for me. Now, the third thing was actually suggested to uninstall McAfee, which I thought was a very unusual thing because why would anyone ever want to uninstall McAfee? No, I uninstalled it day one, didn't seem to help. And the last thing was, have I tried not banging it and not dropping it so much? Yeah, um, that's a good point. I should stop doing that. Anyway, the things that did work for me, and thank you for all those who had suggested these, included firstly, enabling hibernate mode. So you can do that in the control panel settings after 15 to 30 minutes of sleep is what I would suggest. Uh, and this solved not only general battery drain whilst not using the laptop, but also any overheating that might have occurred over that period of time. And it also served, solved many of my other issues relating to, for example, Windows Hello not working and the Bluetooth connection occasionally dropping out. And it essentially supports the theory that the issues I was experiencing were in conjunction with sleep mode and by that line of thinking, Windows 10. More on that later. The second thing that worked was actually nuking the drive and performing a fresh Windows installation. Following this, I was able to use my laptop with sleep mode and about 95% of that time, I was able to avoid the issues I had mentioned previously. And I say 95% because a handful of times my Windows Hello would stop working, requiring me to restart the laptop. And I also noticed that occasionally the XPS would start spinning in terms of the fans would start spinning after turning it into sleep mode. I have, however, had zero encounters of that major battery drain and the severe overheating that was so worrying to me previously. The other caveat to sleep mode is that you will still encounter some gradual battery drain of around approximately four to 6% per hour. And it's for these reasons why I would suggest overall just enabling hibernate mode over sleep mode from the get go. Personally, I dislike the aspect of having to compromise on some features such as sleep mode. Hibernate is realistically slower to wake from, and that's annoying when you have alternative options like Apple's Mac that can instantaneously wake from sleep with minimal battery drain. Now, I also realize that these are really Windows related issues, and maybe the new generation of Eva laptops, maybe they will change this, but I still think that Dell should hold some accountability here. The truth is, the factory Windows images shipped from Dell are, for lack of a better word, they're just trash. They are for the most part buggy and accompanied with bloat. I have experienced this on my Dell XPS 9300 here, on my previous Dell XPS 73902 in one, and on my previous XPS 9370. I mean, don't get me wrong, for the first three months that I had the XPS, everything was working fine. But then after that, for some reason, 
all hell broke loose. And safe to say, I've learnt my lesson, which is to perform a fresh Windows installation for any new Dell that I will purchase from here on outwards. This brings me back to the point of Dell holding some accountability here. I don't think users who have purchased a premium laptop like the XPS, I don't think they should be expected to reinstall Windows because of those issues. I especially don't think that that should be appropriate months down the road when they have likely installed many programs, have many files on the laptop, because it's just, it's incredibly inconvenient and a serious flaw. But unfortunately, that's just the reality of things in its current state. All right, so enough of me being a negative Nancy, let's move on. Every positive thing about the Dell XPS mentioned in my previous video remains. The build quality is still top notch. The chassis has held up well without any scratches or dents. The keyboard deck, now this is the other thing, it just hasn't worn down. It still looks brand new and fresh and the keycaps as well, they hardly show any accumulation of grime or oils and that's something that's oftentimes you see in a lot of different laptops and MacBooks. The screen itself is still, in my opinion, the best in its class. It's absolutely gorgeous to look at. The bezels are super thin. It's what draws people to this laptop and remains the number one feature to me today. Now the heat from the chassis itself, uh, when it's on my lap, it's not unbearable for web browsing or video watching. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And I realized that the micro SD card slot and the USB-C problems I had initially were as a result of my eGPU, which I've since fixed. The only gripe that I at the moment still have is the battery life. But as recommended in my original review, if you care about battery, say if you're a uni student or someone who has long commutes, don't go for the 4K version that I have here, go for the full HD plus version, preferably the one with touchscreen. Even if you like a tack sharp screen in terms of resolution, I think that model, the full HD plus one, has the brightness, the contrast, and the color accuracy to make up for that poor, that lower resolution, I wouldn't say poor resolution. Also, some of you guys have asked about how this performs for video editing. I use DaVinci Resolve and yes, the XPS can handle 4K video edits, but I find that the CPU tends to be the major bottleneck when rendering and scrolling through, scrubbing through 4K video. It works, but I do encounter the occasional drop frames uh, the CPU does throttle a lot, and overall, I think the iPad Pro manages 4K video much more smoothly than the XPS. So given all of this, it's really a difficult decision when it comes to recommending this laptop. On the one hand, it's a joy to use when it's working well. On the other hand, you may encounter software and manufacturing issues. But overall, if you are looking at the XPS 9300, or even the 9310, I would recommend firstly, springing for the full HD plus model. Secondly, reinstalling fresh windows as soon as you get it and initiating hibernate mode. Then thirdly, sending it back to Dell if there's any hint of hardware issues. For me, as much as it pains me, I've succumbed to using hibernate mode and that's just to avoid all the sleep wake issues I had mentioned previously. Ultimately, it's because I love the way the XPS feels, the way it looks, and the flexibility of its use cases. It's just a fantastic laptop, but only when it works well. Now, heaps of you have also asked for alternatives, and unfortunately, I haven't had that much experience using any new Windows laptops this year. I would recommend you check out any other of the channels that are available on YouTube, but in particular, my fellow Aussie, Josh, Josh, he goes into a good amount of depth for a wide range of Windows laptops, and he has a similar mindset about what constitutes a good laptop for the price compared to me. Anyway, that's the follow-up video. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, I really appreciate all the support, so like the video, subscribe and comment below with any further questions or any other content you would like me to do. I'll keep my eye out, but until the next one, see ya.